Hi, everyone, and welcome to Fresh from the Studio. Today, we have Mackenzie Drake, uh, Nora Levine, and Jacqueline Overby sharing um, their processes, some upcoming work, and sneak peeks into their studios. Each artist will present for 10 minutes. Um, during their presentations, feel free to put in the chat any questions or comments. And after all three present, we'll um, come together for a little Q&A and um, hear about upcoming events at Women in Their Work and any additional events that the artists may have. Um, today, we're going to start with Mackenzie Drake. Thank you. Let me try to share my screen. All right, can everyone see this okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, hi everyone, as mentioned before, my name is Mackenzie Drake and I work primarily in painting, but also in printmaking, drawing, and now even some bookmaking. I'm originally from North Carolina, but have slowly moved west and south, moving through Nashville, Memphis, and Jackson, Mississippi before coming to Austin last year to pursue my MFA in painting at UT Austin. Um, I wanted to begin this presentation by talking about a few works that act as touchstones for me. These pieces were driven from a connection to these three idiosyncratic words, bound, earth, and less, which were derived from this work, Bound Earthless. Over the course of four years, I continued making works that considered how these words interact with each other, with the world, and with me. For example, this piece, Less Earthbound, considers the qualifier of less, suggesting a loss of gravity, whereas other combinations like earth boundless conjure ideas of vastness, exploration, and unwieldiness. Moving into my work at UT, I needed to search these works again, these words again, as well as my strategies for making. This intention has pushed me into using oil, which is a very new material for me, um, where I can slowly layer color darks, mostly in reds, blues, and greens to create these pieces that mimic a soft texture of velvet and push these elements of nature to be removed from gravity in order for me to impose a new gravity or force upon them. Within these darks, I really enjoy the sensation of it feeling both soft and deep. So working with surface and a lot of different kinds of oil from walnut to linseed to stand to epoxide really helps me change that surface. Um, so that it does feel like that velvety texture. Um, as the forms inside of these paintings are made, they become fractured and rearranged, displaced and replaced. I don't use reference photos for the objects of the shapes within these um, so that it can be familiar and come from my imagination. Being from the South, this like lushness, this overgrown quality is something that I really enjoy kind of working with. Um, and then through working with color darks, I'm able to bring out some of the saturation of color that lie within the painting as a tool to create a different sensation for the work. I've been told from different people that the orange here feels warm or like fire. And I like playing with that idea of different senses or different sensations when looking at the work. Um, this piece, turn your brightness up if you need to, it's pretty dark, but um, I really enjoy creating these moments of density within the shapes because they allow me in the painting process um, to have a moment of rumination and discovery, a space where I'm let in psychologically. Um, my process for painting is created through an act of searching the canvas and responding to color, line, and shape. Um, and I do this so I can have kind of a conversation with these like known unknowns. Um, a part of this process is not knowing where a painting is going to end up when I start. It's really a process of thoroughly searching the canvas with a lot of different pigments and oils um, and rendering them as I keep going. And here's a detail of that other painting, kind of the fracturing and the stuff to line and here's a more recent version and these are all very large scale you can kind of see that comparison here 
Um, so the large scale paintings I really enjoy because they play with this idea of expanse in comparison to the physical body, either my body or the viewer's body. Um, in these, I'm interested in painting as being commanding as this like enigmatic darkness is rendered into the geometric planes that confront or engulf the viewer. These large scale paintings play with the language of expanse as this like chiasmus of tonal color pushes the dark space forward. And here's yeah, that large and small together. Um, in my smaller scale works, which I heard an artist talk about this recently, that they're like head sized, which I kind of enjoyed, like brain head sized. Um, but they offer a different degree of legibility. These works challenge the viewer to move closer and see the shifts in color among the subtle shifts in line as well. And here are two other examples. These are like five by seven inches, like pretty small. Um, and then as I've moved into this most recent semester of grad school, I wanted to challenge my use of color as well as my use of shape. Um, the way I do this when I get kind of overwhelmed by color is turn to black and white drawings. Um, so these really become a way for me to figure out the dance of tone and line without the decision of color. And they really kind of have been a way to capture like a single thought or a single source of energy as they make and they're really fast. Um, and then recently this exercise is spilled into making lithographs, which have been another way to take the immediacy of the drawing into a different form. Um, UT has a great resource of lithographic stones. So I'm really privileged by this opportunity to use all of these resources. Um, but I usually approach these through the black and white drawings into the, the marks on the stones. Um, and it's been a great way for me to feel connected to my work, through the physicality of connecting to the stone and to the drawing and to the process of printmaking. Here's a photo of me in the printmaking studio going through um, making prints of that piece. Here's another example as well. Um, as I've tried to bridge color back into these works along with my thoughts on content, um, I've also been experimenting with a few different bookmaking practices. This is an image of an accordion book I recently made. Here I'm really trying to think about the shift in scale from large to small. So as you can see, there's little windows in this book so you can see through actual book into the next page um, and then large here's another here's the cover of the book with a little window um, but it also incorporates these large expanses that join sets of pages uh, I was thinking about kind of this like quasi dramatic approach to what unknown could be um, within this understanding of earth um, and so these pieces are really beginning to dance through color and shapes are being honed in a bit more. It was a fun exercise. Um, so I think of all of those things as being parts of my sketching process through this semester. There's a, some shots of my studio right now in progress. Um, and now that I've begun to go back into painting after working in these sketches, and I'm still continuing to do it, um, I'm searching through this painting and I feel really energized by how color and shapes are both materializing and dematerializing. Um, I usually shy away from sharing in progress work because it, I usually warn viewers not to get too attached. Um, however, I really like the aspect of this program of being something where it's fresh and you can see and capture the energy of what's happening in the studio. Um, so. I've really tried to approach painting in kind of uh, not a new way, but just through a different lens right now um, and thinking about how these sources of color can be sources of light and how touch can manip be manipulated to allow more room for the saturated colors to um, like appear and disappear at the same time. Um, but even in these works, I'm still communicating with the same sort of unknowns um, of earth, of boundless, and of less. 
of collapse and stillness and energy. And within that, I'm right now just using the search to my advantage. Um, and I'm enjoying, yeah, just the process of making. I think that's all I have for today. But um, the few things that I have coming up for you all um, is that I have two pots or three pots that I've painted that are on auction for the Trail Conservancy's Twilight on the Trail. Um, you're free to check those out if you're interested. Um, looking at getting some work into Good Dad Studios, which you'll hear more about um, for the Austin Studio Tour. And in the spring, I'll be graduating. So be sure to check by UT for the MFA thesis exhibition. You might see some of these works there. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for the presentation. Um, next up, we have Jacqueline Overby. All right. Hello. Can everybody see me? Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Overby. Um, and I do quite a few different things these days, um, but I'm just going to start off with my personal artwork. Um, I graduated from Texas State in St. Marcus in 2016, uh, and I've been a painting major. And maybe a couple years later, 2018, 2019, I started getting into soft sculpture and needle felting. And so that's my primary artwork now. And the past year or so, I've been really honing in on what it is about the textural play of my work that I'm most interested in. So this is one of my most recent pieces. I originally began working on the forms and over the past year or so, I've started incorporating um, this rubber that I really like directly next to the wool texture. Um, you know, I've been interested in incorporating different animal aspects into these. I have a couple snake rattlers. These are porcupine quills. Um, I have some stingray barbs, you know, just kind of interested in playing around with those. Uh, Another piece I have, this is kind of uh, from last year or so when I was a little bit more colorful than I am nowadays. I'm kind of leaning more towards muted tones these days. Um, but yeah, I think that I kind of strive for this playfulness coupled with a sense of danger almost. I want people to be like attracted and scared at the same time of my work. Um, yeah, and I definitely kind of view it as a big, like hearty meal to, di to digest. I'm not necessarily in a rush to get to a finish line with this kind of work. I'm kind of just enjoying the slow development of it. Uh, I have a lot of other things going on these days, some of which, uh, y'all may have heard of. Uh, a couple years ago, I started with a group of friends, a uh, studio space in San Marcos called Mothership Studios. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll share my screen with our Instagram real quick. So, yeah. We are located in a warehouse just on the outskirts of San Marcos. And this past year was the first time that we held a public event and we decided to create the first ever San Marcos studio tour. Um, we were overwhelmed with the amount of community support that we got. We were expecting maybe 30 artists and we ended up having 67 artists on our tour, uh, which is phenomenal for our first year. Uh, we were lucky enough to get a series of wall panels donated to us from uh, a Google event 
build out. Uh, so all of the walls that you're looking at right now with these are four by 10. And we were able to create a 70 foot gallery wall and several kind of wall partitions with those. We, it was really uh, amazing that we were able to get those donated. <laughs> we actually had too many. That was the deal is that we had to take all of it and then they would deliver it for free. Uh, and we ended up dispersing them to different art organizations in Austin, San Marcos, and San Antonio. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a huge endeavor and we had so much help from so many different people in our community. Um, Chantal Leslie, she just finished the line residency and she did our entire catalog design, you know, we had uh, some local uh, companies as well as like Austin breweries come out and help us. Uh, yeah, it was a huge deal. I think it was like one of the largest events that San Marcos had seen art wise in recent history that I can think of. Um, yeah. And shortly after this, uh, another opportunity fell in my lap with Good Dad Studios. Um, so if you haven't heard of us, we are an old office building that we have been converting into art studios. Um, we were lucky enough to work with two young filmmakers, Olivia Omagul and Carla Odette, and they helped us produce these very quirky uh, video shorts to kind of like uh, advertise our vibe and kind of create some buzz around us and sort of just like kind of communicate the environment of the space. You know, we didn't have a budget to completely eradicate the aesthetic that existed. So we kind of decided to embrace it and run with it. Um, so I'll go ahead and we can watch that video now.
Yeah, there's files. This is uh, me and my business partner, David Wright. What? What if we had a nine to five? <laughs> Your performance this quarter was very good. Uh, oh, thank you, boss. And the reports, the reports are good. And the numbers! And the numbers! <laughs> the numbers! <laughs> for you real quick. Do, 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 do. And I'll just update that spreadsheet. <laughs> Look at me, I've got a good credit score. <laughs> I wish I had a good credit score. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, you've got to be here Monday, Jerry. <laughs> and this is the last one. And this is uh, Joey Tatton with Cat Cold. And then we have Haley Morrison with Pops Up Animals. Who's that over there? Who? Him. Oh, that's Joe. He went to art school and ended up here. Don't worry too much about him. And this is Kel Brown. He's a very well-known local artist. video is available on our website um, and on our Instagram as well. Uh, and I just real quick want to show the floor plan for Good Dad Studios. So right here you can see we have over I think 78 studios available right now and we may be adding some more might be like uh constructing some more in some other areas so it's an evolving number and our grand opening is going to be saturday november 11th uh we're also going to be hosting uh several events around our community that time period during the tour uh finishing off with a panel discussion Sunday the 19th, um, centering around the old and the new Austin art scene and ways to move forward together. Um, yeah, so that's my spiel. Thank you so much for everyone's time. Thank you. Thanks, Jacqueline. And next up we have Nora Levine.
Thanks, Diane. So I am going to start sharing. I'm going to start with a uh, short video about my work and then I will return. Okay, so the sound's not working. It's not working? Okay, mm -hmm. let me start again. Sorry about that. Let me try again. Let me know if this works. My name is Nora Levine. Yeah, right. I'm a mixed media visual artist creating primarily through the mediums of encaustic and photography. I approach my work from a place of curiosity and wonder, and I'm strongly influenced by the beauty of nature, animals, and my daily meditation practice. I have vivid memories of spending time in nature as a little girl, observing animals and other natural elements. Now that I'm a mother, I find vast inspiration from the way my daughter sees the world and her ability to be fully present in each moment. Her presence has caused me to slow down and reconnect with that time I spent in nature as a little girl. This shift in perspective invites me to look deeply into what or who is in front of me and create art in response. My work honors the creatures within each piece through a distinctive process. I dedicate time and space to each animal, to each element of nature and its uniqueness. The images are then carefully embedded into layers of pigmented wax medium. The wax is applied in hot liquid form by brush, heated pen, manipulated with a heated iron, or poured directly as liquid. Each layer is then fused together with a torch and scraped with a razor blade. I often fill the markings and etchings in the wax with oil pigment, which reveals a history of the blade manipulations. Through thoughtful use of color, materials, and composition, I create a newly imagined, dreamlike place where these creatures live. And I'm going to stop sharing just for one second. And then I'm going to start. Can you see my cheat sheet notes, everyone? Yeah. You can. Okay. One sec. How about now? Can't see them now. So um, my visual art background started in photography in both education and career. I ended up having a portrait photography business, both um, mostly focused on children and uh, pets. And are we good? Okay. Um, I had a portrait photography yes, business for about 50. Yeah, of course it's Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I think we have some background noise. Um, my encaustic work came out of came out because I missed working in the dark room. When I first started in photography, I was working with my hands and there was a magic to it that I felt like I was missing once I started working with digital photography and on the computer a lot. My art is born out of a love of seeing and is nurtured by my experiences as a mother, as a practitioner of meditation, a lover of nature and animals, and as just a human trying to become a better one. As I mentioned in the video, I'm strongly influenced by the way my daughter sees the world and I'm inspired by the vantage point that um, young children have. I can easily say I'm more open to awe and wonder than I have been in a really long time. One of my intentions with my work is to honor the creatures in nature that inspires it. From a technical standpoint, I'm looking to marry the materials of photography and encaustic so that the viewer takes in the pieces as a whole. My earlier work upon reflection seems to have more of an environmental portraiture feel to it. 
Photography and seeing and still images is a thread that continues to run through my work as an artist. It's impossible for me to create this work without the influence that photography has on me. This the, photography influences my choices about composition, perspective, which images I select, the gesture that I'm choosing, and lighting, color, cropping. Um, I don't intentionally work in series all the time, but I do tend to explore subject matters, uh, subject matter or concepts in various ways. And I approach them more as explorations. I really love peacocks. So I I've been doing a lot of different variations on peacocks. Uh, another one of my intentions with the work is to create magical spaces and elicit a sense of wonder and calm or awaken imagination in the viewer. My current work feels uh, more narrative in nature in the sense of these reimagined worlds being created. I started a drawing practice in 2020, and this has informed the work that I create today. My, I really enjoyed the freedom that came with the materials. There was a sense of playfulness. I found myself um, really yearning to be feel more spacious between the pandemic and early motherhood. Those feelings are really lacking. This is an exploration on the movement of energy, and I'm interested in exploring the effect that we have on others with our energy. I, I love the tactile experience of working with encaustic. The process draws me into the present moment and feels really nourishing. This is an exploration of the po of possibility and wonder. I find a lot of joy in creating a sense of atmosphere with the materials. I love using gesture that I find I capture with the photograph to inspire, uh, inspire the work. This piece felt like a call to savor the sweet moments in our lives and the beauty we have access to it. Something I think I definitely woke up to more after early motherhood and, and the early stages of the pandemic this is a closer up detail of it. Sometimes I create a story with the piece and the artwork serves as like a moment in that story. I often begin with a really basic physical sketch and they're usually really terrible. And then I begin, then I end up with a digital sketch to play around with scale, positioning or color palette. And I loved exploring the, this uh, series on moons. And I really enjoy looking at the world with new eyes and staying open to what fills us with awe. This piece honors the listening to your inner voice and the inner wisdom coming from experience. And as I get older, I'm trying to tap more into this. This piece represents the rhythm of our lives, the concept of moving forward slowly, one beat at a time. In the early pandemic stages, I had an 18 month old and uh, we really had to embody that one day at a, at a time mindset, certainly not what any of us had in mind. I love the sense of the powerful, you know, the powerful grace in, in Bison. This piece was inspired by a sense of loneliness and isolation, but also that sense of strength and perseverance that we all have inside of us. I build the wax up in many thin layers and the layers feel very symbolic to me, to what it means to be a human and live a human experience in that our history and memory live underneath what's on the surface. And sometimes what's underneath reveals itself and sometimes it gets concealed. Most recently I've been exploring working in a modular form, something I wanna to continue to investigate. This concept is one of expansion that's really compelling to me. The series embodies the expansion of untethered energy, and I'm inviting the viewer to witness movement of energy beyond ordinary boundaries and beliefs and to experience a felt sense of growth. And the modular pieces can be arranged in any to fit any space, which feels really freeing to me. This piece was inspired by a sense of having a place to feel supported and comforted, that place that we all can access internally through a practice of self-compassion, which is another thing I'm trying to improve on. All my pieces are made on pan wood panels. So this is just an example of the side of the panels. And I usually just finish them um, with a veneer. 
It was a revisit of a concept of sharing uh, joy and energy. Currently, I'm working on a series of koi fish. It explores the movement of perpetual change and a cultivation of equanimity through the colorful dance of vibrant koi fish. And this, I'm having a lot of fun playing with the movement of the water and surface play, kind of playing with um, what lies below the surface and what with uh, transparency of the wax and the buildup of the wax. This is a sequence leading up to the final piece. A little bit, a little sketch. And I don't know if this video will work, but let's just see. So the wax is built up layer by layer and heated with the torch, as you saw in the video. I lost my notes. Hold on a second. Am I still sharing? No. Am I still sharing? No. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We're good now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here are some of the layers scraped away and the wax that remains. And I use a lot of a pigment stick to kind of in uh, place inside the indentations and the holes and they're encapsulated inside the wax. And here's a final piece again and some detail shots of it. So this is the last piece I was uh, recently made. It's the 32 by 60. It explores, um, you know, being in the flow, no matter what's going on around you, more exploration of equanimity and connection. And here's the current studio shot. Just yesterday, I'm starting a, another piece for the Austin Studio Tour, which um, will be coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about that. So I'm making another piece for that. My studio is always messy. There's wax everywhere. There's wax all over my house because my studio is in my home. <laughs> I tread it, every, track it everywhere. Um, but I love it. And this is just information about the studio tour. I'll be part of the group show for at the George Washington Carver Museum. And I'm stop number 365 at the Canopy Art Studios. So I'm looking forward to meeting more people and getting out into the world and connecting. Thank you. Nice. Thank you so much. I think uh, now we can open up the floor for a brief Q&A session. Um, if anyone has any questions or comments, um, you can either put them in the chat or also just uh, say them yourself too. I'm also happy to read any questions as well. Um, and I also have all of the social media and websites of our presented artists in the chat as well. Oh, uh, you're on mute, you, Jackie. All right, hello? Good. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a question for you, Nora. Uh, I guess, like, was there a, p I'm not sure if you went over this, it was a little hard to hear with the rain, uh, but what was it, was there a transition for you from painting to working with the wax that you work with now? And, like, how long was that? Like, how did you? <clears throat> like, did I have a background in painting? Yeah, yeah, question? and then like what was like originally like your first like efforts into like the transition? Yeah, that's a great question. So I studied photography in college and I was one of the only photography students that was obsessed with painting. A lot nice. of photography students didn't want to take painting. So I really loved it. But then I think what happened was I had to make, I decided to make the decision to be a photographer and I went that route. And I think I always had these whispers in my ear to paint, but I never had time to paint. And then 
over the years and then digital came in and then I just felt like I've got to do this. And the whispers started coming in as like yelling. And then my body didn't like being on the computer with the editing so much that it was like screaming at me. So I took a class at Laguna Gloria in photography. It was in encaustic, an intro to encaustic and it incorporated in blending in photography with encaustic. And that was something I was just called to do. And all my work started really small, you know, baby small. And it was mostly photography and a little bit of painting. And then over the years, it has just become more painting and less photography or just more of a balance between the two. So it's been a long time coming. I don't know if that answers your question. That's really interesting because I do kind of see it so much to do with like layering of the light. That's interesting. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I actually have a question for Jacqueline. Um, I want to know about kind of what challenges that you had to overcome or are working through with forming Good Dad Studios and as well as Mothership Studios and sort of how um, you were able to sort of bring this community of artists together um, in these two spaces. Um. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's been really hard <laughs> the past couple of years. Um, I think that I think that with mothership, we started off very small and organically and very grassroots, and we just were able to build a really solid foundation and start slowly. And you know, I've been around the San Marcos area for like almost like 10 years uh and then whenever I moved to Austin I started making a lot more connections up there um and I think that I think a lot about gardening and more like seasonal crops that you're planting seeds with but then also like trees and fruit trees and vines that you're trying to cultivate for years to come and so I think that I try to organically build upon efforts and like organically develop a network of support and friends and community. Um, I don't know. It's kind of just been, I've been fortunate to be able to find it happening so organically just through my efforts, you know? Um, but there's so many other aspects of it that have been very hard and challenging that you didn't like anticipate when you're first doing it. Um, I think with good dad, everything is so new and so big that there's a whole new set of problems that wasn't the same with mothership. So I don't know. I think that no matter what you do, when you're doing things like this, they're going to be hard one way or another. There's always going to be something wrong or some challenge to fix. Yeah, that makes sense. Excited to see the studios for sure. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. I have a question for Mackenzie, actually. Hey, Mackenzie. <laughs> um, I really loved your description of this kind of space for your psychological mind to wander and the, like the darks and kind of this, this immersion in that part of the painting. And I was kind of wondering in the drawings and the lithos, is there anything about that process that engages your mind differently or in a similar way for you? Or how do you interact with that work differently from the paintings or similarly? Yeah, I think the lithographs and the drawings, like because they're so immediate, that it's able to like capture a single thought or like a single um, train of thought. I, or energy it's really like a capturing of energy <laughs> more than anything um being able to like get it um through from my like brain and body onto paper or the stone or stone to paper in that way whereas the painting process I think through it's like lack of immediacy like you're working through a brush and it's an extension of body Um, it like forces you to work slower um, through mixing of paint and adding medium to that and like 
the time it takes for that medium to dry on the canvas, it becomes like an accumulation of thoughts um, or like an accumulation of like energies. Um, so I think that's like a big difference between the two. Um, I think the goal is still like to feel immersed or to feel completely like um, in communication with this unknown, with this earth um, and like imagining spaces without gravity um, that yeah, the, like, the immediacy has felt really important this semester or like at this time where it can just be um something I don't need to like think too hard about but just really feel what's happening thank you yeah I just wanted to let everyone know that uh Jacqueline's power just went out so that's oh, why wow. she's no longer on the zoom um, I think she did mention it was raining in San Marcos, so it's probably a storm. Well, I guess with that, if we um, have any other lingering questions, we can start sort of wrapping up. And um, also, I'd like to sort of, I can also uh, talk about what's upcoming for these artists as well as for women in the work. So I'm going to do a final question call, they're all good. They're really great presentations. Yeah, um, really good. Really enjoyed hearing about y'all's work and also seeing different intersections, um, even though you guys are all working so differently. Um, but just a reminder, so Mackenzie does have some work in some auctions that are coming up and I've posted that link as well. It also sounds like we're all gonna be participating in the Austin Studio Tours um so at good dad studios mackenzie is that where you're gonna be and then the so. George, i'm sorry oh so yeah i, I oh, think so, so. yeah absolutely. perfect <laughs> and then nora at canopy as well as the george washington carver museum um also be on the lookout for mackenzie's thesis show coming up this spring congratulations um and then on women in their work side we have our next talk about, which is going to be coming up very soon, Thursday, November 9th, and that's going to be our Austin Studio Tour edition. Um, and Women in Their Work will also be having a studio tour for the second and third weekends, 11th through 12th, and the 18th through 19th. And then we are also having a talk about with our current solo exhibition artist, Virginia L. Montgomery, and she's going to be speaking with Jana Labraska, who is a researcher, writer, and PhD candidate in art history at UT Austin. And that's gonna be Saturday, November 18th at 1 p.m. in the gallery. So we hope you can all join us for that. Um, but other than that, thank you all so much for joining us here today on this rainy day um, to hear about some great art and about some of your studio practices. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to women and their work. Thank for you. sure. Thank you guys for participating and I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day. Bye.